with Winston in 2015, a quarterback presumed to be the first overall pick in 2015. It was Winston, then it was Marcus Mariota. It could go three, four. It will go three, could go four, maybe go five deep in the first six or seven picks. That's good news for Stephen Jones and the Dallas Cowboys as the quarterbacks fly off the board. He appeared yesterday on 105.3 The Fan in Dallas. Here's Stephen Jones talking about the Cowboys' draft strategy this year, given where they are. You know our standing policy here. We don't want you to have to horn your answer in or anything, but if you're Sir Tan about who y'all are going to take, we will give you the clean... Very good, very good. We will give you a clean slater to go ahead and tell us what is going to happen in the draft. You know, pretty much uh, unanimous people are thinking there's five first-round quarterbacks. That certainly helps us out since uh, we signed our quarterback of the future just this... uh, spring and know he's our answer to to that riddle but uh uh, we are we think going to get some great opportunities because of the depth not only at quarterback but offense in general and you know we certainly want to improve our defensive football team so certainly the top end of that draft uh helps us in terms of what we might see there defensively certainly this should be pushing uh some defensive football players our direction Absolutely will push defensive players their direction. They may have a dilemma. Top defensive player on the board versus Kyle Pitts or versus a tackle. Or, yeah. Yeah, but but the, the, it could play out. The nine selections in front of the Cowboys all are oh, offensive. Yeah. That's a way it could happen. And the Cowboys would have their pick of all the defensive players in the draft. Edge rusher, middle linebacker, corner, any area they want to address, they're going to address it. They may have the ability to trade down as well. Chris, we talked about that dynamic last hour. The Cowboys are a team where the power structure is going to be there next year. Maybe they see an opportunity to move back a little bit, pick up some more lottery tickets, maybe some for next year where they have a better chance to scout. But either way, when you have multiple needs, always better to consider sliding back if you can. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. I mean, really, it's it, it's going to be interesting. They are sitting in a pretty spot. I mean, as far as like a defensive defensive needs, you know, I could sit there and say maybe Denver might be a team that looks for defense, right? Maybe a little bit. I think they could, you could put them in that conversation, uh, but not the same positions I don't think Dallas is looking for. Dallas has got, you know, Two things I think you look at. Yeah, they, I, I think they could use a legit, you know, edge pass rusher opposite of Lawrence. I think that's like a real thing, to, at least to me, or some difference making defense alignment. I don't think any D tackle is worth 10 there. So maybe if they wanted to go that route, they trade down there, you know, but but corner pass rusher. Certainly. And like, you know, I heard the radio host there making the Patrick certain jokes and all that. That's, uh, you know, I don't know. If you made me say who the Cowboys are going to pick at number 10 right now, it would be that guy. You know, they don't have corners. I think Sertain really fits the kind of Seattle, Atlanta, you know, Dan Quinn scheme, right? You know, he's a bigger guy. I don't think he's like the best man-to-man corner, but I think he's really smart and can do everything real good. So he would fit everything that way. That makes sense. So if they stay at 10, I'm expecting to be Patrick Sertain. If they drop down, I think they're probably looking for uh, some sort of defense alignment that they feel like they could get just a little bit later in the draft and get some picks like you're talking about. Patrick Sertain over your guy, Caleb Farley? How dare you? Well, I, Caleb Farley, to me, no doubt is the guy. But that's – Mike, that's the amazing thing. I mean, I don't know where he goes. Opt out, back surgeries, all of that. He's a freak show. You know, maybe that's why they trade down. Maybe they realize, like, hey, wait, we could get Caleb Farley maybe at 18, 20, something like that. You know, maybe that's why they do. Maybe they don't feel comfortable about taking him at 10, but they'd feel better at 20. That's a, that's a possibility. You know, the other thing I look at, too, you know, with, like, Jalen Phillips, the same thing. Jalen Phillips, for my money, and, I, you know, I heard, um, you know, uh, Brant, uh, Gil Brant, right? The other day, I was I was reading an article on him, and he 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 t- made a comment about you know the best pure pass rusher, the guy that could be a star out of the defense is Jalen Phillips. Now, I mean, Gil Brant's around the Cowboys a lot. You know, I would think he'd be their type of guy too. But you know, again, the concussion history, all of that stuff, missed football two years ago by sitting out and and all of that. 
Uh, maybe that's why they trade down too. Maybe they got their eye on him. They don't feel comfortable at 10 and they can go, wait, we can get him maybe at 18 or 20 or something like that. So interesting spot for the Cowboys and a lot of intrigue with this draft. Holy cow. You mentioned Gil Brandt. I got so much respect for Gil Brandt. Yeah. 89, still going strong. Crazy. And, and you know, the rest of us can only hope that that at that age, number one, we're still around. Number two, we're able to do anything. And number three, we're able to do the thing that we love. And we still have a love for it yeah. after that many years to still have the passion. It really is a remarkable story and good that he finally got in the Hall of Fame as he deserved to be. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.